What's up everybody, welcome to another video and I hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. In this video I'm gonna prove the power rule. This is a rule that we learn about in calculus. We use it to take derivatives of various functions, polynomials, rational functions. We use it all the time. And in this video I'm gonna prove it for a couple of reasons. First of all, I think the proof for this is pretty interesting and there's actually two forms of it. One is a little more limited, as you're gonna see in just a second, and the other one is less limited, but a little more complicated. It requires a little bit more knowledge of calculus. So there are two different proofs we're gonna do. And the second reason, and the most important reason, is because I think it's important to justify this stuff, right? Because for me, at least, I don't like to just be given formulas, told to learn to use them, and then, you know what I mean, apply them to problems. I wanna know where these formulas come from. And I want to be shown that they are in fact true, right? I'm just that kind of person. So if you're that kind of person too, hopefully this video scratches that itch for you that you have for truth and justification. Let's go and jump into it. Enough rambling. The power rule, hopefully we know it by now. Most of us probably think of it as the N, the exponent comes out in front and then we subtract one from the exponent. Turns out this works for any real number N. So N could be pi, it could be E, doesn't matter, still works for any real number N. So let's prove it. And what we're gonna do, or how I'm gonna start at least, is I'm gonna define a function as X to the N, right? So if I define this function as F of X equals X to the N, now all I need to show is that F prime of X, right, the first derivative is N times X to the N minus one. So how I do that is I use the definition of the derivative, and there are a couple different forms the definition I'm going to use is this limit as h approaches 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h, right? So what is f of x plus h? I plug x plus h in, I get x plus h, the whole thing to the n. So I have x plus h to the n minus f of x, that's just x to the n, all over h. And what I want to show is that this limit equals n times x to the n minus 1. It may not be obvious how to show that. I know it wasn't for me when I tried this for the first time on my own. But what we can actually do, and what I'm going to do in this proof, is use something called the binomial theorem. Here we have a binomial, right? Binomial raised to some nth power. So we can use the binomial theorem, but what we have to do is we have to restrict n to belonging to the set of natural numbers, right? Positive integers, because otherwise our binomial theorem doesn't work. So this is why I said in the beginning that this first proof is a little bit limited, okay? But that's how we do it in this proof. We're gonna let n be in the set of natural numbers. So this proof is going to prove the power rule, but not for any n in the real numbers, only in the natural numbers, which is still something. But then the second proof for this, we're going to prove it for all real numbers. It just requires a little more knowledge of calculus. We're going to do this proof anyway. I think it's a pretty cool proof. So let's use the binomial theorem. So using the binomial theorem, this equals the limit as h approaches 0 of what? Let's see. Binomial theorem. My first term is going to be x to the n. And technically in the front, I do have n choose 0, but that's just 1. And at the end here, I have h to the 0. That's just 1. So I'm just writing x to the n. Plus, do you all remember this pattern? It's n choose 0, n choose 1, n choose 2, all the way down. So this is n choose 1. And then the powers of x decrease by 1 each time. And the powers of h increase by 1 each time. Right? That's the pattern. So then our next one is n choose 2, x to the n minus 2 h squared, and that's where I'm going to stop. I'm going to do a plus, dot, 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 plus. Our last term is h to the n. And again, technically we have an n choose n. That's just 1. And we have an x to the 0. That's just 1. And then we still have out in front that minus x to the n. And this is still all over h. So this looks insane. And you may be thinking, why would you ever do this? How does this help? But just watch. It's pretty amazing how this works out. So First of all, we have x to the n minus x to the n. We can get rid of those right away. x to the n is gone with minus x to the n. Clear cancellation. Now look what we have here. This is really cool. We have at least one h in every term, right? In this term, we have one h. In this term, we have two. And then they increase all the way until here we have n of these h's. So that means that we can get rid of this h in the denominator. We can cancel it because we have an h in every term in the numerator, at least one right? 
So if we cancel this H, which was what was really keeping us from taking this limit, by the way, right? The big problem was when we plug in zero, we get something over zero. That's a no-no, right? So now we can do it. We can cancel this H. So this H to the one, this H is gone. One of these H's is gone. That becomes one. And then we continue, cancel, 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 all the way down until this N becomes N minus one, right? We cancel one H in every term. So let's see how this helped us. This equals now the limit as h goes to zero. Now we don't even have a fraction, this is nice. I'm gonna write n choose one as n. Anything choose one is just itself. So this is n times x to the n minus one, which should look familiar. That's what we're trying to show, by the way. And it turns out that's what we're gonna be left with. Maybe you already see it by now. Maybe you already see why this is gonna work out so nice. So now we have one H instead of two, right? Because we cancel it. Plus all the way down till we have H to the N minus one. Now look how nice this limit works out because what we have here is the limit as H goes to zero of this long expression, but almost every term in this expression has an H in it. In fact, every term has at least one H in it except for our first term. So what happens when we take this limit is this is going to go to zero because zero times anything is zero. So that's gone. This last term definitely go to go to zero. That's zero to, to some power. So it turns out that everything disappears. All this stuff is gone. Everything goes to zero except n times x to the n minus one. There's no h in that term. That gets left alone. So then our final result, do I even have room to write it? Equals n times x to the n minus 1, which is exactly what we wanted to show, right? So this is a pretty cool proof, I think. Again, it's a little limited because we had to restrict n to the set of natural numbers. We will prove it for all the real numbers in the next proof, but I think it's pretty cool that we get to use the binomial theorem. We get all this nice canceling. I don't know. Hopefully you all think it's cool too. So now I'm going to prove this for all n in the set of real numbers, not just natural numbers, right? And you may be thinking, why did you even do that first proof if it's a limited form? Why not just jump straight to this one? Well, the reason why is because this proof requires a little bit more knowledge of calculus. You have to already know logarithmic differentiation and explicit differentiation a little bit for this to make sense. And second of all, because I thought it was fun. That's the main reason. I thought the first proof was fun. So let's jump right into it. We're going to let y equal. Instead of f of x, I'm going to call it y for notational purposes. You'll probably see y pretty quickly. And what I want to show is that y prime equals n times x to the n minus 1. Okay. So my first step is I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. So this is where that logarithmic differentiation comes into play because a lot of times when we have functions and we're trying to find the derivative and that sort of thing, when we take the natural log, it makes our lives a little easier, right? as it does in this case. So using my log rules, I have x to the n, I can bring the n out in front. That's just the properties of logarithms, right? X1 could come out in front and be multiplied. So now I'm gonna take the derivative with respect to x, and this is where we require the knowledge of implicit differentiation, right? Because y is a function of x, the derivative of ln y won't just be one over y, right? Because we have to consider that y is a function of x, so we're really using the chain rule in a way, right? So y prime sort of pops out of there, and I can replace that one with y prime. Essentially, it's one over y with a y prime multiplied, so I just stuck the y prime up there. Now, this right-hand side is pretty easy. n is a constant. The derivative of ln x is one over x, so I'm just gonna write this as n over x. And now remember, what we want to show is that y prime equals n times x to the n minus one, so it would make sense to solve for y prime. Let's get y prime equals something. So really what I'm doing is I'm taking this equation and I'm multiplying both sides by y. That's n times y over x. Now, y equals x to the n. So let's replace y, let's do a substitution, and replace y with x to the n. And maybe you already see how this is gonna work out. We can use our exponent rules because down here what we really have is an x to the first power. So we have the same base. So what we can do is do top exponent minus bottom exponent. So that equals n times x to the n minus 1. So we've shown that y prime equals n times x to the n minus 1, which is exactly what we wanted to show. And we didn't need to put any restrictions on n. It was an arbitrary, constant, real number. So this is the proof 
for the power rule, the general proof for any n in the real numbers. But I still thought the first one was fun, so I thought I'd throw it in here. Hope you enjoyed this video and got something out of it. I like doing these videos, so leave any requests for other proofs you want to see below. I plan on doing product rule and quotient rule eventually, so stay tuned for those. Like and subscribe. But most importantly, keep flexing those brain muscles, and I'll see y'all later.